people from outside of our country, they're able to see this, but our dummies here in our country are falling for this and some other European countries. So that's why I'm always glad to hear somebody with a more grounded perspective and different background that is able to look at America and say, this ain't the country that I struggled to get to. This ain't the country that my ancestors said, if we can just get to America, we can say what we want, you know, decide our own destiny. Let's check it out. Before we get to this video, make sure you hit like, share my videos, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Also, make sure that your notifications are on and they're set to all. Now, let's get into this. But first, quick commercial break. 2022 has shown us what might be coming. So if you're fed up with everything being so expensive and the threat of inflation hanging over us, it's time to take action. A precious metal IRA uses tax advantage gold and silver to keep inflation at bay and give you protection from financial nightmares. And you'll get a stunning free three ounce silver American virtue coin when you open a qualified IRA account this month. You know what I always say, you can't go wrong with noble gold. Call 877-646-5347 to find out more or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. And remember, there's always a risk of loss and past performance is not indicative of future results. A friend of money, I came to the United States at the age of four. four. I was an immigrant to the great state of New Jersey and I grew up in Morgantown, West Virginia. Okay, a now wait a minute. This lady came as an immigrant, grew up, went to New Jersey, liberal. Then she went to where? West Virginia? Now, wait a minute. I'm sure what she's gonna say happened she went to West Virginia and oh yes man <laughs> yes man it's me mob mob this stereotypical white nationalist Trump supporter man that's right we don't want your kind coming up here in West Virginia okay you going back to where you came from uh India or wherever Babylon or maybe Hittitesisms and stuff. We don't know where you came from, man. Can you define what you You ain't even pure white. What are you, some kind of off-white? Huh? Look like gray or mulatto or ash. I don't know what color you is, man. I want you to be undeniable, clear, pure, white as snow. If you're gonna come up here West Virginia, man. And don't forget to bring your big old Bible and uh, honor our Snow White Jesus. Now, God bless you. Only if you're white. See, I'm sure that's what she gonna say. See, cause West Virginia got to be a big old fat racist place. Mostly white state. Mostly white? I was affirmed, I was supported. What? And I was able to grow up a girl who knew not a word of English when I arrived to become a reporter for the Wall Street Journal. Holy moly, how did she negotiate her way through all of that white nationalism and racism in West Virginia? She must have Barry Sanders type skills cutting on a dime to get through all of that racism and white nationalists didn't even come in speaking English. Huh. Why did the teacher stop her at the door and say, get this kid out of here. They don't even speak English. We don't want your kind here. We won't teach you. Why did they do that? Huh. Here before you today, apparently the face of white supremacy. What? I am wearing a shirt that my father made. My father survived literally white supremacy in India. Oh, here we go. So here's a lady, parents came from India. They understand real racism, real white supremacy, things like that. And yet we got everybody on TV walking around talking about white supremacy. Every time you get fired off of a job for coming in late every day, uh-huh, getting into a fight on a job, it's white supremacy. Every time you can't make it in life, white supremacy. But these people know what it really is. See, so she's wearing a shirt with all of the words that I guess this lady from India has been called. Because now she's the face of white supremacy. Father is five foot three because when he was a boy, the white supremacists that were the British rule the in rules. India mm -hmm. literally funneled food away oh. from the people of India and my father starved. Sounds and like so he sure. grew up to be a young man who came to the United States of America oh. because he believed in the man. values and principles of this great nation. My father made this shirt for me, inspired by the gown that Representative Ocasio-Cortez wore to the Met Gala. Oh, yeah! The oppressed Latino, uh-huh, from the streets of New York. The one that went through all of that, you know what I'm saying? She she ain't just a bartender. She's just a Jenny on a block around the way, girl. 
I'm hurt. I went to that gala with that very nice dress on, that very expensive one, with all those fancy words uh, really accusing all these other people of, you know. So let me see. Here's all the words that we've been called, including this lady who's not even white, but a domestic terrorist, a mama bear, what else? And it says on here the names that we, the parents in the United States of America, have been called, including in the video that you featured Chairman Raskin. Raskin? with that big old poodle on top of his head. So now there they are, there's of course showing a video, I guess, maybe, and they're trying to push this narrative to indoctrinate our kids. And I'm sure the problem is not these parents that are concerned, no. The problem is your limited mind. The problem is you non-white people who have a problem with this is white supremacists. You think they fell for it? You think they, is that, you think that'll pass? That, for only for some people, the dumb ones? Okay, all right, we're gonna go with that then, right? They're white supremacists, even though they're not white? Okay, good, let's go with it. That's what's happening in these meetings. Things like domestic terrorists, oh. white supremacists, oh. QAnon moms. QAnon moms. What is it that we, the parents, have dared to stand up against yeah. in the United States of America hmm. over the last couple of years? It is a divisive ideology oh. expressed through this book called Critical Race Theory. Get him, girl. It is a book that is taught in law schools, but it is translated into our school systems with books like this, Not My Idea. Now, wait a minute. What she's doing is what I like doing, exposing the trickle-down effect. Them trying to disguise all of the other policies and ideology that they're trying to insert by redefining it or mixing it in and to being able to teach it and influence people without them knowing that that's what they're doing. So we're not gonna open up the class by saying, hey, today we're gonna be studying critical race theory. But what I will do is read you a book that has points in it that indoctrinates you with principles, ideas, beliefs, behaviors that all support critical race theory. There you go. This way you can't accuse me of saying that, yeah, we teach critical race theory. No, we don't. We just have books that represent and illustrate critical race theory. That's what we do. We're not teaching your kids to be transgender. We're just using material and books and stuff that always seem to have a kid in there that's confused about what gender they are. Yeah, let's continue though. A book about whiteness. The trickle down effect of the demonization of any human being because of their race is books like this. Where does this book take us as an idea? Where? It takes us to this very simple idea. Oh, shoot. An idea that is a new hierarchy of human value. Mm. There is no doubt that the hierarchy of human value that was about white supremacy is illegitimate. Every single person is opposed to the idea of white supremacy. We should be. Now, isn't that crazy? So let me understand. We're fighting racism by inserting more racism into society very strategically though meaning this this is being pushed by a small group of radical black folks elevated by white liberals and also a lot of white liberals globalists and democrats and folks like the people we see on tv and people who own some of these big old companies and they're woke and all that stuff disney and all of them but ironically they're never inserted into the white supremacy role See, we will allow you guys to pollute and destroy our whole society by reversing the role of white supremacy, you know, and say now we are non-white and we have the ability to demonize attack and go after all you white folks who just want to mind your business, who ain't thinking about race, who want to go to work, get a couple cold ones, kick it. Now all of a sudden, that's white supremacy. You got the luxury of sitting back in. Well, you do too if you go to work. You do too if you wanted the American dream. I didn't come to your crib telling you, you got to sit here. You can't do this. You can't do that. Nobody's doing that. People are minding their own business. But you got people who are in powerful positions that are saying the people minding their own business are not being controlled by us. 
So what we need to do is divide them so we can go ahead and rob the bank while they're fighting amongst each other. We can go ahead and attack all of those who don't want to support our radical agenda, our radical policies, don't want to support the change that we want to take place in this country. They don't want to support that. So therefore, we'll just label them as racist white nationalists. So this way, all the bubbleheads will get mad at them for nothing, thinking that their whole motivation for not wanting to get this shot. Their whole motivation for not wanting our borders to be wide open, their whole motivation of saying, America first, we should be the first ones to get the jobs here. Their whole motivation for those things is because they're white supremacists. But really, by them opposing those things, stand in the way of our agenda. See, we can't tell everybody we're behind it, so what we'll do is create a narrative of white supremacy. That's what we'll do. We'll create that narrative. But we'll never insert ourselves into it. See, we're not the ones. So how in the world do all these white Democrats, all these white commentators on the news who push this narrative escape that? How in the world all these black race baiters, all these victims, these white liberals who support this narrative, how can they not stop and look at themselves? How can they not stop and say, wait a minute, the people who's telling me that white supremacy is the reason for all of this are white. Huh? Why aren't they in the same category? Why don't they have white privilege? Why don't the owners of Disney, who are white, have white privilege? I mean, they're like poster child of white privilege. Any white billionaire, billionaire would be considered what? White privilege, except for Joe Biden. He doesn't have white privilege, no. Except for Hunter Biden, who didn't go to jail for a gun violation, uh-huh, on crack, got a laptop, Filled with all type of corruption laid out and no feds bust down his door and slid down his chimney. But he doesn't have white privilege. No, they're fighting against all this racism and white supremacy from all the other white people. You see how dumb people are. And I'm just going to have to say it like it is. But we cannot replace an old hierarchy of human value with a new hierarchy of human <laughs> value that go demonizes go. children with go. this book. What is the book? Whiteness is a bad deal. Oh, God. So let's replace the old white nationalism and stuff. We're fighting against racism by telling all of these little kids, even though we're not pushing critical race theory, we're not pushing that. But in this book, all of our little white kids sitting in there are going to have to read whiteness is a bad deal and not even get upset about it. Not even once stop and say, wait a minute, they're talking about me. I'm white. Why am I a bad deal? What did I do? I never enslaved nobody. I wasn't responsible for Jim Crow. I'm not a racist. Yes, you are, just because you're white. Yeah, you were born into this, man. It's a bad deal to be white. Now, imagine if that book said blackness is a bad deal. Being born black is a bad deal. Uh-huh. Forget James Brown. Say it loud. Uh, I'm black and I'm proud. Uh, say it loud. Forget that. That song is irrelevant no more. You can no longer be proud to be black. It's a bad deal, man. Being Asian, bad deal. Being Jewish, bad deal. Do you understand the backlash? But somebody right now in our society is bold enough to put that in a children's book and wonder why these parents are in there upset. And this lady ain't even white. Signing a contract with the devil. What is the message in this? The me Whiteness is a bad deal. It's signing a contract with the devil. So it's the white devil. Now, the same people who will probably get up there and support that book, like Kamala Chameleon Harris, who's always pushing white supremacy, all of that, who's married to a white man. Nobody notices that? How did her husband escape being a white supremacist? He don't have white privilege being married to a black vice president? That's about as white privilege as you can get. Yeah, you know who I'm married to, right? A black girl. Yeah, she's the vice president. I don't even have to work. That's right. I don't even have to work. I got secret security following me around just because I'm married to this black woman. Huh? What about what about Alexandria Cortez, who's fighting for the cause? Got a redhead white man. How about that one soul sister number one, Ilhan Omar, that walks around with that big old wrap on top of her dome and yet cut her black husband loose after cutting her brother loose. Cut her black husband loose for a white man. You think she's rocking him back in Somalia? You think she's gonna take him back to the motherland? Uh, proudly arm around her. This is my white husband. Uh, yes, we've been together now for... You think she'll do that? You think all the Muslims over there would be like, we welcome you, bro? No. 
but yet will get to a mic and condemn every other white person except for their own husbands. Now, here's the reveal. The reason you know that these folks don't believe any of that crap that they get out there talking about is because if you're married to a white man, do you think that white man would be married to you if you really believe that? If you were as radical as you pretend to be, if you seem to hate all white people, you think he would be okay in that environment? You think he would tolerate you coming home every day after grabbing a mic, talking about whiteness and white people, white, and come home to him? You don't think that that would pour out in a relationship? I come home, the house is not clean, uh-huh. You, the colonizer, should be doing this. Nobody would tolerate that. Don Lemon, married to a white man. Those folks would not marry these black folks who pretend to be that radical if they were really that radical. Not to mention those radical black folks wouldn't be marrying white folks. And nobody even considers this. Let them get up there all the time pushing this garbage into our society, supporting these narratives, and then walking away after they drop a bomb in society, going right back to their comfortable lives and let us work it out. Message is the shaming of human beings. No child should be shamed. And why is this a threat to our democracy? Yeah. Because we then have posters like, like this what? one in the Los Angeles school district. What does it say? F America with KKK replacing the C. You see that? Tack on America. Tack on us, the US and the citizens. This type of poison. America with KKK. No real justification. No justification for that. F America with KKK replacing the C. In Los Angeles. Hmm? You wonder why it's so violent there? Mm -hmm. Liberal city. Now, what do you, what do you think this is? saying. I mean, one of the most liberal states and cities, and they're talking about F America, as if the people in Los Angeles are being chased down by men on horses with sheets and ropes and whips. I mean, are you kidding me? This is the biggest psych op ever. When you create a false reality that people that are privileged in America are walking around thinking that America is still representing the time era that the KKK ruled. Even during the time where the KKK was relevant, Los Angeles wasn't being affected by it, but yet somehow in Los Angeles, this side pops up. F America, there you go kids, F America. Good luck when we need to fight a war. Good luck when we need heroes. No more of those. Can't even call them heroes, probably, according to Stanford. Because the idea is that our nation has become a white supremacist nation, and that is not true. That is not the reality, and we can see exhibited here today this poster also, F the police. This is a... Oh, we're, oh, we're, oh, we're, oh, we're F the police coming straight from the other ground. A young brother got it bad because I'm brown. <sighs> so, F the police. Now, I'm sure that these things wouldn't be supported in society if it was F Democrats, you know, if it was F liberals, if it was... F the work, uh, the the one percenters, F Joe Biden. You couldn't even say, uh, let's go, Brandon. They were offended that you would even say, let's go, Brandon. Yeah, but yet, F the police. What if you were to say, F the FBI? No, they don't want that because, see, remember, the FBI does the Democrat Party's bidding. So those are the group of people that we don't want signs out there like that because now you're radical. If you're saying F the FBI, see, you're radical now. Yeah, see, but you could say F the police because we don't support them. We want the FBI to be distributed across the whole country and represent power, authority, and the strong arm of us liberals. That's what we want. So don't be down talking to FBI. We're talking about getting rid of them. We're talking about getting rid of them, okay? However, these local cops are filled with racism. That's what it is. Get rid of them so we can federalize police and expand our power and control over the whole country. Just like we want that same power for voting, everything. We want it to all come from us. That's what we want. Forget separations of power. So we will allow it. We'll allow you guys to post your signs demonizing our enemies only though. Don't you be making signs and hanging them up talking about F the Democrat Party, though, because now what you are is an extremist based on our definitions. What you are is spreading dis and misinformation based on our definitions. Don't you be on no internet questioning our elections that we stole because now you're spreading dis and misinformation. But we can see how that works for all the idiots out there 
who fall for this garbage, but not me and not y'all. We're almost done. It's an ideology that I call the woke army. The woke it is an ideology of activists who are going through America's school districts and our communities, and what they are doing is a threat to democracy. Yes, it what is. is the greatest threat that our children face today? What? what? It is the learning loss mm. that has happened in our school districts. The Department of Justice declares clearly the characteristics that lead any human being to extremism include having less education. Chair oh, snap! Y'all hear this intelligent woman breaking this down? So, what leads to extremism is lack of education. The, I want y'all to understand what she's saying. I'm gonna have to flush this out for a second. I only got three minutes. But lack of education. Now, what do you notice about Democrat cities? You think they care about the education? How is it that all of their cities are broken when it comes down to education? Could it be that they know that they can create radicals if they lack knowledge, if their minds can be controlled, if they can keep them in a constant state of victimization that really is a result of lack of knowledge? A dumb mind can be controlled. A ignorant mind can be controlled. We can put or insert whatever information we want in your brain if we keep it void of real information, real education. People who evolve and become educated most of the time is able to start seeing your garbage, your manipulation, your control. So notice all of these young folks College, let's go ahead, educate them, but give them a false sense of education, pseudo education. We'll go ahead and educate them with radicalism. And for the rest of those that don't even make it to college, keep them in conditions like what we're about to hear in all of these Democrat ran cities and people sitting right here in this meeting. Here's what's going on in their cities with the education. And she's about to point it out. I mean, Raskin, I don't know if you know it, but the reading level in your school district, in Montgomery County Schools, is at 32%, 32%. of kids that are reading at, at grade level. 32% in Raskin's district. But he's running around going after Trump. He's wearing that poodle on top of his head out here pushing books in their district like that garbage that she just read. So yeah, yeah, we want him reading, but we want him reading about little Timmy questions, whether he's little Timmy or little Tammy. We want them reading, but we want them reading about um, I'm white and I'm, I'm, I'm a demon and I guess the devil possesses me now and I'm filled with racism. How can this guy be up here talking about anything and his district is reading at that level? Who else? Math is at 30 percent. Oh, Congressman, Congresswoman Tlaib is here in Detroit. It's 18 percent and then 12 percent for math. What? It is a failure. This is a system failure. White supremacy must be defeated, as must all extremism. This is our mandate as adults for our children. Our children are in a crisis today, and the idea that we, the parents, are now the agents of white supremacy is unacceptable. Yes, it is. All of these books that I have here today are the indoctrination that are being put into the minds of our children instead of the fundamentals that are critical to make them educated, enlightened citizens that protect our democracy. That is our greatest mandate, and that is the one that I am honored to serve with you to realize for our children. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love that woman, man. Love Y'all see what's going on? So the, the people with the bullhorn, the people who's running around talking about everybody's a victim, except for the people who is in my district. Everybody's racist, even though all the little black kids in Democrat-ran cities, lower educated, can't read, can't do mathematics, but they sure do know about racism. Yeah. One, you know what else they know about? They know about bullets flying in their neighborhood. Uh, they know about that government cheese. Yeah, Teach them and educate them on just the most minimal survival tactics ever. Don't teach them how to live and excel. Just teach them how to survive. Get them hooked on our Democrat teat. Uh-huh. We want to make sure we supply them with just a minimum amount and then blame the fact that they can't get ahead or more than that. Not on us, but on racism. White supremacy, the white man, conservatives, Trump, you name it. Not us, though. Even though we're the first line of defense you should be looking at. You're the first person that y'all should be stopping and say, wait a minute. How did you bunny hop over you who run our city and get all the way to 
Trump all the way to conservatives. They're not running our cities. How is it that you want us to learn this garbage right here, but don't want to learn us to learn math, reading, science, stuff that actually can be applied in our lives? Why is it that you want us like that? Well, because an ignorant mind can be controlled. People in conditions where they don't have options will have to rely on these globalists who want to destroy options so that all of us will have to rely on those people. That's why they're attacking our middle class. That's why they want to destroy middle class businesses. That's why they want to make sure that we're controlled through the dang on climate narrative. They want to make sure that everything we need comes from them and they cut off all of the other supplies, flow of information, knowledge. They'll become God. They'll become the controller of all of us. But as of now, they got a lot of opposition. Start with me and all of y'all. So that is why we're seeing them push things like critical race theory, white nationalism, radicalism, because after that gets squashed, after they get rid of us, after they break the will of the American people, after they continue indoctrinating our kids, then there's no more need for everybody to be running around pushing white nationalism, America exceptionalism, and they're not gonna wanna hear any of that garbage after they get finished doing what they do. That's when they'll show, just show their real faces, right? To shut all that mess up. No more breaking windows and burning down buildings. Uh-huh. That's when all of us will become white nationalists. All of us will become racist. All of us will become extremists. We'll be sitting right there next to all of these liberals in the same holding cell. How'd you get here? I have blue hair, camel toe shoes, and a man bun, and I was out talking about uh, this is fascism. Really? Well, what about you? How'd you get here? Well, I just didn't want to take the shot. So we're both extremists? Yeah, that's when the reality hit them. Now, God bless y'all. God bless America. God bless y'all. God bless America. Don't forget to hit that like button. Share my videos. Find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those good things. And please check out Extreme Tees, my sponsor. If you like their products, please click on the link below this video. Put Kevin in a promo code. You'll get a 20% discount. If you'd like to donate to Kevin's Corner, feel free. The links are below this video. If you want to be a part of my $2 a month club, also feel free to do that. All it entails is you simply dropping two bucks a month into one of those links below the video. Or if you want, you can drop a nice big fat lump sum in there to offset the stuff that we know goes on with Big Tech. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Make sure that you are still subscribed. And finally, set your notification button to all because YouTube is playing games, y'all. Now, God bless you. God bless America. See y'all next time in Kevin's Corner.